Hello and welcome to CMC Markets and this quick look at the week ahead beginning the 26th of June. Now most of the event risk for this week comes at the back end of the week. We've got a number of important data releases out including final iterations of first quarter GDP out of the UK and the US. You may recall that UK first quarter GDP was a little bit disappointing because it was downgraded from 0.3 to 0.2%. It would be surprising if we saw a significant move on those numbers. I think what's probably going to be more interesting is the readings that we get for inflation, EU inflation and US PCE inflation, given the fact that some of this, some of the inflationary pressure that we've seen coming out of Europe and the US does appear to be moderating, and yet US officials, Fed officials still seem um, pretty much intent on raising rates at least once more this year and potentially um, potentially more than that but I think there is a concern that maybe the Federal Reserve is probably ahead of the curve and not behind the curve because when you look at what oil prices are doing have been doing they're 20 percent down from their peaks this year and I think there is a concern that they may they could well go quite a bit lower particularly if that key support around about the $40 a barrel uh, level gives way. And I'll come on to OPEC and oil prices later in the video. But I think in terms of the UK, I think the pound is going to be centre stage at the back end of the week. Not only do we have the final iteration of first quarter GDP, we also have the final vote on the Queen's speech. And there's significant potential there that a failure for the Conservatives to push that speech through the Parliament could prompt um, another general election because ultimately I think a failure to actually get that speech through would potentially um, prompt a little bit of what I would call a constitutional crisis and make Theresa May's position as UK Prime Minister running a minority government very, very difficult indeed. Now let's look at the mathematics of this. There's 318 Conservative Party MPs. The majority needed to pass the Queen's speech in theory is 326. However, 18 MPs in the House of Commons come from Northern Irish constituencies, seven of which Sinn Féin don't take up their seats, so they don't get counted in the final tally one Irish independent and 10 Democratic Unionists. Now the Conservative Party has 318 seats. If you combine the numbers for the Labour Party, they have 262, you've got the SNP with 35, you've got the Liberal Democrats with 10, and then you've got five other MPs on top of that. That brings a total of 314. So if you exclude Sinn Féin, who won't, don't take up their seats and, and you exclude the DUP, who will not vote for a Labour government given their antipathy towards Jeremy Corbyn. Ultimately, all the Conservatives need to do is to get all their MPs to vote for the Queen's speech and it will go through. Um, and that for me I think is the key, the key element to this particular story because if you look at way, the way the pound's been behaving over the course of the past week or so, there's been mixed signals, shall we say, coming out from the Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee. Last week we saw that uh, the Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee was split on whether or not to keep interest rates on hold. Three policymakers voted for a rate rise. Um, one of those is actually leaving the MPC at the end of this month to be replaced by um, a, another, probably more dovish, Monetary Policy uh, Committee member. However, Chief Economist Andrew Haldane um, put a little bit of the cat amongst the pigeons um, in comments this week when he stated that he came very close to raising rates as well. And that stance is diametrically opposite to what Mark Carney was saying about the possibility that a rate rise remains some way off. So far from actually there being a significant majority to keep interest rates on hold, maybe the MPC is more split than maybe we think that it is because Andrew Haldane, if you recall, was one of the key policy makers who suggested a sledgehammer 
was needed to um, mitigate some of the more nasty effects of the Brexit vote um, at the end of last year, despite the fact that I was very sceptical as to whether or not a rate cut was actually needed. Now he's talking or articulating that there could be a possibility that some of that stimulus could be reversed and interest rates could be pushed back up to 0.5% all the while leaving the current stimulus program, the QE, the extra QE in place. And that has helped, I think, underpin the pound in the short to medium term. It's still above the 200-day moving average, which currently comes in around about 125.60. So I think while we're above 125.60, then I think the prospect of down, further downside in the pound is likely to remain limited. But we really do need to get back above 127.50, 127.60, stabilise, or we do run the risk of further downside pressure. So keep an eye on the pound. Um, for the week beginning the 26th of June because I think the failure to get the Queen's speech through the House of Commons could well prompt further sterling weakness. Though I have to say I would be surprised if that does happen. Um, also have a quick look at Brent crude prices in the context of the declines that we've seen over the past few days and really the big big level on Brent crude for me at the moment on this contract here is the November lows that we've got around about $43 a barrel. If we break through that then we could well see further losses towards the lows that we saw in August. Now WTI, US WTI, has actually broken below those November lows and has, is, and has traded back towards levels near to August. So WTI does appear to be leading this move lower, largely on the basis of rising rig counts in the US and they come out on a Friday, late on Friday, so certainly we'll be keeping an eye, eye out for them. But be very aware that we could see a little bit of a rebound in oil prices, but unless OPEC gives any indication whatsoever that they're going to cut production further, then ultimately I think the line of least resistance for crude oil prices in the short to medium term is towards the downside. So key events this week, Queen's speech, uh, votes on the Queen's speech which are likely to happen on Wednesday and Thursday. We've got US and UK Q1 GDP on Thursday and Friday. And we've got EU CPI and US Core PCE on Friday as well, key inflation data. So that's it for this week. Thanks very much for listening. It's Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.